America's evil genius back with you once again, and the mother of all legal battles is underway. Yes, indeed, the uh, long-awaited and much-anticipated Supreme Court fight over Obamacare is in full swing now. Uh, it was last week, probably Tuesday or Wednesday, that they started the uh, oral arguments on the case. And, uh, you know, the, the Supreme Court is one of those things that, if, if I'm honest about it, if you're honest about it, most of us don't have a large amount of familiarity with, all right? Uh, it's not like your local traffic court. It's not like Judge Judy or Judge Walton or anything else. There's a lot of very specific procedures and traditions and, and, and things that they do up there that are quite a bit different than most other courts that uh, you likely are familiar with. So I know that I did what a lot of you uh, probably did as well on Tuesday and Wednesday of last week once oral arguments got underway. Uh, I went and, and looked on the different uh, news shows and, and opinion shows and so, so forth, and I went and looked at a lot of different uh, news sources, if you will, to see if I could get a read on what was going on and, and to see if I could get some sort of analysis of it in order to see how this thing was going on. I mean, it's a pretty key case. I mean, we need to know this, right? We need to, we need to be aware of what's going on. And I suspected when I did that, that uh, I predicted anyway, that uh, when I went through that process, I would go to the conservative stations and uh, during the oral arguments, they'd say, oh, it's going great for the, the anti-Obamacare crowd and oh, this thing's gonna be overturned and clean as a whistle. And I suspected when I went to you know the liberal shows like MSNBC or Current TV or whatever, I expected them to say, oh, it's going great for the, the pro-Obamacare side and and you know, if they just argue X, Y, and Z, this thing will be a done deal and it'll be upheld and everything else. Surprised that that did not happen. I was actually surprised to see that when I started looking at the analysis and all of the uh, different talking heads that were out there across the board, pretty much all of them said that the uh, anti-Obamacare side was doing quite well in the, uh, in the oral arguments and that the pro-Obamacare side, well, it wasn't going so good for them. Kind of surprised to see that in terms of the spin. So that tells me that I think most on the left pretty well know that their goose is cooked on this thing. And that, legally speaking, they really don't have a leg to stand on. And, you know, in the ensuing days, you saw, you know, Rachel Maddow and all the rest of them uh, start talking about how inconsistent the Supreme Court is, you know, has been and so forth. Hello, we've been telling you that for decades. Not for nothing. But anyhow, I, I thought it was very... Uh, telling that the left has stopped even arguing the legal side of this because they know they can't win or they don't think they can win now nothing is in the books yet anybody who follows this stuff will tell you that the supreme court is probably the most unpredictable area of our government that there is so the hay is certainly not in the barn yet but by what few indicators are out there it seems to be going well for our side if you hate obamacare it looks encouraging right now okay so let's take that idea, let's take the uh, probable result of this case, and let's look at how that might affect the presidential campaign. Now, most observers are pretty upfront in saying that, well, hey, a, uh, a, a striking down of Obamacare ru being ruled unconstitutional, that's really going to help the Republican Party in the presidential campaign. Well, yeah, I don't think that's much of a stretch. But I also am not sure that a lot of people are truly understanding how much of a game changer it could be for the right and how it could be used not only to fire up the base, but to really create the narrative against Barack Obama that we're going to need to have in the general election, regardless of who the candidate is. And I think an unconstitutional ruling could go a long, long way towards shaping the entire narrative of this debate, of how we market our eventual candidate, of how we fight Obama. And, and I wanna talk about that a little bit today. Now think about something. If Obamacare were to be ruled unconstitutional, as, as I say, what few indicators are out there are making it look like at least significant parts of it will be. Uh, if that happens, you know, this is not just some random piece of legislation. This isn't a highway bill. This isn't some, you know, a procedural piece of business that the Congress, you know, takes up from time to time. This is the centerpiece of Barack Obama's vision for America. This was really, uh, if you, if you want to say it, the, the key piece of legislation of Barack Obama's first term. And I think he would probably even agree to that most likely. Obamacare was really supposed to be the first step in what would be 
a very significant transformation in American society. And, you know, if you think back to the 2008 campaign, the whole thing was hope and change, hope and change, hope and change. And granted, there was a lot of people out there that voted for Barack Obama that were you know, very, very much in favor of the type of change that he wanted to bring about. There were a lot of people like you and I uh, who were very much, much against the change that he was trying to bring about. But the one thing we all could probably agree on is that Barack Obama definitely wanted to significantly change American society. He wanted the America of tomorrow to look significantly different than the America of today or the America of yesteryear. And in that respect, Obamacare was kind of the, the first shot across the bow of that significant transformation of American society. In fact, Barack Obama put most, if not all, of his political capital initially behind Obamacare. This was supposed to be the signature piece of legislation. This was supposed to be the springboard from which all of the other transformations and changes in America that Barack Obama wanted to make would spring forth from. Once he got Obamacare in, then it was on to maybe cap and trade or this or that or the other thing. So if Obamacare is deemed unconstitutional, would it not simply be the uh, repudiation of the signature piece of legislation during Obama's reign, but would it also be a repudiation of Obama's entire vision for a changed America? Would it not also be a repudiation legally of Obama's vision for a transformation in America? Think about what the word unconstitutional means, or at least what you feel when you hear it. When you hear the word unconstitutional, you think of something that is the opposite of what our nation was founded on. That is the opposite of the principles that our founding fathers stood for. And the opposite of the, pr the principles that America is supposed to be about. So put in that context, an unconstitutional ruling of Obamacare would certainly, at least to some people, call into question not only the constitutionality of it, but also the constitutionality of Barack Obama's entire vision for America. Since this was supposed to be the centerpiece of it, since Obamacare was supposed to be the centerpiece and the first shot, if that's unconstitutional, then how constitutional can the rest of what Barack Obama stands for be? It's a pretty powerful message. It's a pretty powerful thought. It's a pretty powerful idea. And I think it will be up to the campaign of the eventual GOP nominee, if they're smart, to illustrate this repudiation, to illustrate this dichotomy, to illustrate how different the viewpoint that Barack Obama has for the future of America, how much the opposite that is of the vision of our founding fathers. You know, unconstitutional, as I said earlier, is a very powerful word. And if the uh, campaign of the eventual nominee, whether it's Romney or Santorum or whoever, Whoever's running that campaign, whoever's designing the ads and uh, putting the talking points out there and coordinating all of that, who, whoever their Karl Rove is, whoever that person is, they need to be very mindful of the word unconstitutional. And they need to be willing to use it at every opportunity. In fact, I would go so far as to say that in 2012, the word unconstitutional should have the same visibility in this election that the words hope and change had in 2008. If 2008 was the election about hope and change, 2012 should be the election of the unconstitutionality of Barack Obama. The unconstitutional president should be the entire meme for this campaign. This should be the centerpiece of all of the marketing, if you want to call it that. It should be the centerpiece of virtually every speech, every soundbite, every lapel button, every bumper sticker, every yard sign. All of those campaign materials should contain or at least allude to the word unconstitutional, assuming that Obamacare is ruled that way. You know, if you think back in the last election in 2008, we on the right surmised that Barack Obama was a dangerous anti-American ideologue. But if you think back, Really, what we based that uh, impression of him off of was uh, off of his associations with certain people and off of his own words, but really we did not have the opportunity 
to back that up with actual accomplishments of his or with actual uh, you know actual pieces of legislation that he had put into into, into force uh, very often because quite frankly there was virtually no record of accomplishment for Barack Obama going into 2008. He really had never held down any sort of legitimate job or uh, never really accomplished anything of note, never ran anything. Uh, pretty much wrote books, talked a lot, agitated some inner city people as a community organizer, and then ended up in the Senate. That was his life. So he really didn't have a chance to go and say, okay, here's our proof that Barack Obama is, is uh, the antithesis of America because he you know, he, he passed this bill or did this or did that. There's very little of that that we had to draw off of in 2008. We had to surmise based on what he said and who he hung around and, and what he surrounded himself with. But you see, this will change in 2012, particularly if Obamacare is ruled unconstitutional. Because an unconstitutional ruling of Obamacare will codify everything we said about him for the last five years. We suspected that he was a dangerous left-wing anti-American ideologue, but an unconstitutional ruling of Obamacare will prove it because it will show that the key piece of legislation in his first term was also a dangerous anti-American piece of legislation, that it ran contrary to what this nation has always been about according to the vision of our founding fathers. That's a very powerful thing to say. You know, in 2008, we told you that Barack Obama was the antithesis of America, but now in 2012, we'll be able to prove it, assuming that the Supreme Court goes in the direction that many people think it will. The idea of an unconstitutional president, going beyond just Obamacare itself, but talking about and putting into question the entire vision that Barack Obama has for this country, putting into question the very core beliefs that Barack Obama has. It's not just Obamacare that is unconstitutional, but we could then extend that point to saying that the very core beliefs Barack Obama has also must be antithetical to America. And that idea of an unconstitutional president, unconstitutional in every sense of his being, is something that can unify all of the various camps within the GOP that oppose Obama for various reasons. It would, it would be able to unify the social conservatives and the fiscal conservatives and even those people who are, who are the birthers. And, and I'm, I've never been a birther. I've never been one of those people that said, oh, Barack Obama wasn't born here. I don't know. I really don't. Uh, I've always said all along, if someone has some proof, go ahead and bring it forward. Let's deal with it. But until we get to that point, there's bigger fish to fry. But nevertheless, if we frame this as an unconstitutional president, even those people will be involved and, 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 and fighting and they'll be, uh, they'll be enthusiastic just like all the rest of us will. But not only will it unify the Republican Party against Obama when we illustrate the unconstitutionalness of his entire being, not just his Obamacare, but it also might bring over some independent voters who while they might not hate or despise Barack Obama the way most of us do, at the very least still have some questions about him in terms of the, and I'm going to use the air quotes here, the mystery that surrounds him. Because let's face it, none of us knew very much about him before 2008. And he sold a bill of goods. And there's a lot of people out there that voted for him the first time that are saying, he didn't really, didn't really end up being uh, as nice and centrist as he tried to, to make us believe he, he was. I think those voters are up for grabs this election. And if we can illustrate that not only was Obamacare unconstitutional, but therefore everything that constitutes Barack Obama's vision of America is also contrary to what America is about. We call into question the very essence of Obama's Americanism. But I think some of those independent voters would come over as well. In other words, an unconstitutional ruling is a game changer as far as this election goes. This supplies us with the best possible narrative you can have for beating this president. But there is one other possibility. I know it's easy to say that an unconstitutional ruling would benefit the GOP. Yes, it would. I think it would be a game changer. Others have not gone so far as to say that. But what if, what if somehow, in spite of all the signs that we've seen so far, 
what if somehow the Supreme Court does not do the right thing and they somehow uphold the key components of Obamacare? If, 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 if I'm saying that an unconstitutional ruling would be a boom for the Republican Party going into the election, then does it not also follow that a constitutional ruling would, would then sink us? Would then pull the plug on our campaign? I don't think so. And I know that sounds strange, but here's why. Obamacare is not a terribly popular piece of legislation in this country. I saw a uh, poll from Gallup, I believe it was, the end of February that said 72% of the American people believe that Obamacare is unconstitutional. So it tells you, that, and, and there are other polls out there as well that, that say similar things. Some of them don't have numbers as high as 72%. Uh, but nevertheless, it is, Obamacare is more unpopular than it is popular. At the very least, Obamacare is an unpopular piece of legislation. At the very worst, Obamacare rips at the very fabric of what America is supposed to be. And those of us who oppose Obamacare are probably somewhere along that continuum, somewhere. So if the Supreme Court rules this thing constitutional, then at the very least, they're upholding a massively unpopular piece of legislation. But at the very worst, they will have turned their back on this country. They will be a rogue Supreme Court. And I think in that case, the Republican Party will be able to effectively and truthfully make the case that the Supreme Court has gone rogue, that the Supreme Court would then be as much of a threat to the United States of America domestically as the sitting president is. And I think our base and, and, and those who are sympathetic to us would be just as fired up in that case as they would be if the, if, if the law were ruled unconstitutional. In other words, I think this is a win-win situation for the Republicans. There's not a good position for the Democrats to be in here. Because look at it from the Democratic side. People say, well, a constitutional ruling will fire up the Democratic base. Hey, I got news for you. The Democrats' base are going to be fired up no matter what happens. All right? It doesn't matter who we nominate. They're going to be fired up. Probably won't be anybody else fired up for them, but their base will be fired up. I'll give you that. If Mitt Romney's a nominee, they'll be fired up because Mitt Romney's rich. If Rick Santorum's a nominee, they'll be fired up because Rick Santorum is religious, and by God, we just can't have a religious person in the White House. If somehow Newt Gingrich gets this nomination, they'll be fired up because Newt Gingrich is white and he's a Southerner. And in, in the Democrats' mind, that's about this far from being a serial killer. And if Ron Paul were to somehow get this nomination, they'll be fired up because they'll want to cut just about everything you can in government. So they're going to be fired up no matter what happens. The ruling of the Supreme Court will have very little impact on it. But in terms of the right, I think both possible outcomes in terms of the election could benefit us. Because Barack Obama and the Democratic Party are in a very unenvious position right now in terms of Obamacare. Either Obamacare is ruled unconstitutional, in which case the very essence of what this party has stood for for the last several years and what they've backed for the last several years will be called into question in terms of whether it passes muster with what America is supposed to be about and what America has traditionally been about. Now you have to call into question the class warfare of Obama and, and, and the cap and trade and all the other things that he stood for, particularly the taxation. You have to question all of that now. You have to question all of his entire vision for America or Obamacare gets held up as constitutional, and now you have the American people saying, hey, we don't want this, we never wanted this, we got rid of the Congress in 2010 because of this, and the Supreme Court has gone against our wishes anyway. Now they're just as bad as the president. Either way, we're going to be fired up about this. And either way, the Democrats are in an untenable position. So that's the effect on the presidential race. But let us not forget, this is far more important than just a presidential race, even though that's what we've been talking about on this program. This is about our future as a nation. This is about whether America will survive or whether it will perish. And I hope the Supreme Court remembers that. I hope the Supreme Court, all you justices up there, you remember that you're American and you have to uphold what the Founding Fathers said and what the Constitution states. 
And if you do that, you have no choice but to rule Obamacare unconstitutional. This should be a 9-0 ruling. I doubt it will be, but it should be if you are doing your jobs and upholding your duty. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next week.